أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد الصادق الأمين وعلى آله القرر الميامين وعلى من سبعهم بأحسان إلى يوم القيامة والدين أيها الإخوة المسلمون المؤمنون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We worship Him and Him alone. We glorify Him. We ask Him to help us in all aspects of our life and to bless us and our families wherever they may be in the world today. The most merciful, the most gracious, the cherisher, the sustainer, the king, the master, the creator of the seven heavens and the earth, the king of the day of judgment. And we send our peace and blessings to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The discussions regarding the jinn has been one of the most, if not the most, spoken about topics within our communities and amongst our youths today. And unfortunately, the world of social media has led our youths to believe in things that have nothing to do with Islam whatsoever. In the past one year, the most asked about questions I get asked is circulating around the jinn. Do we believe in jinns? Can the jinn possess us? Are they harmful to us? Is the jinn more powerful than us humans? Can we actually see the jinn? And so on. It's come to a point where I receive phone calls to come and check for spirits inside someone's house or jinns. Almost like the movie The Conjuring, where demonologists help get the evil out of the person's home or life. And this is of course no fault of this individual for a lack of faith and lack of understanding of the reality of the jinn or shaitan. Especially nowadays where lack of iman has been widespread and normal in this week watered down reality TV and social media world that we live in today. So tonight, inshallah ta'ala, in a nutshell, I want to shed some light on this topic once and for all and hopefully answer these, answer these questions to the best of my abilities to help better our understanding of the world of the jinn. Based, of course, from the Holy Quran, the authentic ahadith, our scholars, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their souls, and of course, our aql, our intellect, our rational thinking and I'd like to start first and foremost on the meaning of the word jinn what does jinn mean jinn means something hidden or concealed I always tell those who want to study the Arabic language then look no further than the Holy Quran for it has everything jinn according to the Holy Quran means something not appeared in front of us covering or hidden we learn this from chapter 6, verse number 76, regarding the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلما جنة فلما جنة عليه الليل رأى كوكبا which means, so when the night covered جنة when the night covered him with darkness, he saw a star Hence why we call the fetus Janin, meaning the fetus that is hidden in the mother's womb, also mentioned in the Holy Quran in chapter 53, verse number 32. Which means, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is most knowing from the moment he intended to create you from the earth and when you were just a fetus in your mother's womb. Now that we know the meaning of the word jinn, let us look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the jinn. In chapter 51 verse number 56 of the Holy Quran, Allah azza wa jal says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُونَ Which means, and I have not created the jinn nor mankind, humans, except to worship me. So from this holy verse we learn that yes, 
There are living species called the jinn. So who are the jinn? Who are they? And what is their reality? Like we have to answer, as humans have to answer before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment, so too do the jinn have a Day of Judgment and they have to answer before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned everything in the Holy Quran. We have a whole chapter called Surah Al-Jinn. If you go to chapter 72 of the Holy Quran, you will find a chapter called Surah Al-Jinn. In verses 1 and 2 of Surah Al-Jinn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and please listen carefully to these ayat, to these verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا Which means, Allah says, قُلْ Tell them, Ya Muhammad, that it was revealed to you, revealed to you, Allah didn't say, tell them, Ya Muhammad, that you saw, Ya Muhammad. Notice, no. It has been revealed to you, Ya Muhammad, that a group amongst the jinn have listened and said, indeed, we have heard an amazing, miraculous Qur'an. Anyone who says to you that they saw a jinn is clearly lying to you because even the Holy Prophet وسلم, didn't see the jinn. No, it was revealed to him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَهْدِي إِلَى الرُّشْدِ فَآمَنَّا بِهِ وَلَا نُشْرِكَ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا Which means, the jinn are saying, it guides to the right path. So we believed in it, the Qur'an, and we will never associate partners with Allah. But hold on a second. When we say jinn, straight away people think, oh my God, Iblis, Satan, Shaitan, evil. As the Qur'an says, fairly, in chapter 18, verse number 50. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَا فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ Which means, and we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam. So they did so, except for Iblis, he was from the jinn, and he moved away from the command of his Lord. So this verse is teaching us that just like there are shayateen among the humans, there are also shayateen amongst the jinn. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيًّا عَدُوًا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنْسِ وَالْجِنِّ شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنْسِ وَالْجِنِّ Which means, we have made for every prophet an enemy, devils from amongst the people and amongst the jinn. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, going back to Surah Al-Jinn in verse number 4, He says, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ يَقُولُ سَفِيهُنَا عَلَى اللَّهِ شَطَطًا the jinn are saying that the foolish one amongst us has been saying about Allah an excessive transgression. The foolish one. Who's the foolish one amongst the jinn? Iblis. Prostrate to Adam. You want me to prostrate to Adam. And I am made from fire and he is made from clay. I am better than him. You see this racist attitude? Now, do the jinns have some sort of strength or power? Absolutely. And if we look at the story of, for example, of Nabi Sulaiman, Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam, it will teach you about the jinns. In the time of Sulaiman alayhi salam, in the time of Prophet Sulaiman, he had a very special relationship with not only the jinn, but he can also communicate with the animals. And all were his servants. Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam in the Quran would speak to ants. Now remember before I said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jinn addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam to say Qul, say ya Muhammad that I heard it was revealed to me not that I saw meaning the jinn can't be seen correct? So what's this contradiction that Sulaiman alayhi salam the jinns were the slaves of Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam how did Sulaiman alayhi salam see them but the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his entire household not, did not see them chapter 38 verse number 35 قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَهَبْ لِي مُلْكًا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِنْ بَعْدِ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَبِ Meaning, Sulaiman alayhi salam said, My Lord, forgive me and grant me a kingdom like none other after me. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, 
if it wasn't for my brother Suleiman's dua, supplication, if it wasn't for his dua, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him a kingdom, if it wasn't for my brother Suleiman's dua, then he would not have seen the jinn. Because Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam, as mentioned in the Holy Quran, Allah had granted him a kingdom and slaves like no other prophet after him. To the extent where even the wind was his servant. فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الْرِيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ رُخَاءً حَيْثُ أصاب. Which means, and we subjected to him the winds by his command, and the wind will blow gently wherever Nabi Sulaiman directs it to. So Nabi Sulaiman would see the jinn and communicate with the jinn. One day Sulaiman was in his kingdom, and his hoodhood, according to the Holy Quran, his hoodhood means a type of bird. He was an envoy to the Prophet. Sulaiman said to his hudhud, why are you late today? The hudhud replied and said, وَجِئْتُكَ مِنْ سَبَئٍ بِنَبَئٍ يَقِينٍ I have come to you from Sheba with certain news, Ya Sulaiman. إِنِّي وَجَدْتُ مْرَأَةً تَمْلِكُهُمْ وَأُوْتِيَتْ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَلَهَا عَرْشٌ عَظِيمٌ I found a woman by the name of Queen Sheba and she has a kingdom, a great kingdom, with a great throne. Nabi Sulaiman after finding out that her people in her kingdom are worshipping the sun, he sent the queen a letter. When the queen received this letter, she sent back gifts to Sulaiman to see how this supposed messenger of God will react through barbary. Now it's a long beautiful story, but inshallah we'll cut it short to get to the moral of the story. Prophet Sulaiman looked at his kingdom and said, قَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَوْ أَيُّكُمْ يَأْتِينِي بِعَرْشِهَا قَبْلَ أَنْ يَأْتُونِي مُسْلِمِينَ Sulaiman said to his kingdom, to his slaves, which one of you can bring me a throne before they come to me in submission? Almost to say that after this miracle they will for sure stop worshipping the sun and worship the one who created the sun in Allah Azza wa Jal. Yes? By the way, this is all in the Holy Quran, Surah the naml chapter 27 of the Holy Quran. Now, the next verse is where it gets very, very interesting. Which means, the audacious one amongst the jinn said, I will bring you the throne of Sheba before you get up from your seat. Now, this proves to us that the jinn are powerful. And to pick up a heavy throne from Yemen and bring it to you before you get up from your chair. Now, this is a miracle within itself. The next verse, chapter 27, verse number 40, proves to us that, yes, the jinn are a powerful creation, but not as powerful as the human beings who has some sort of faith. قَالَ الَّذِي عِنْدَهُ عِلْمٌ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ أَنَا آتِيكَ بِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَرْتَدَّ إِلَيْكَ طَرْفُكَ Someone with some knowledge of the book. Almun min al kitabi. I will bring it to you before you even blink. Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam, before he blinked, the throne was in front of him. Who bought this throne in front of him? Which human? Before he blinked. Asif bin Barghiyah. He is not a prophet of God, nor is he an imam. He was a wasi. A representative of Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam and he had some knowledge of the book and he managed to overcome the jinn. A lesson for us all that if we say A'udhu Billahi min ash shaitan ar rajim if we say if we say Ya Allah I seek refuge from the outcast of shaitan then how is a jinn going to affect me? Jinns can cause some mischief but they can never possess or harm you. How can we prove that jinns can't possess us? It is scattered all over the Quran in chapter 2, verse 102, وَمَا هُمْ بِضَارِّينَ بِهِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ They, the shaitan, do not harm anyone except by permission of Allah. Anyone who says to you that I saw a jinn has lied to you and went against the Holy Quran. Because in chapter 7, Al-A'raf, verse number 27, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ which means, and shaitan and his tribe see you 
from where you do not see them. In chapter 14, verse number 22, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُدِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Which means, and Satan will say, Indeed, Allah has promised you the truthful promise, and I also promised you, but I betrayed you. I had absolutely no authority over you. I simply only invited you, and you responded to me. So don't blame me, blame yourselves. Shaitan just took an oath that they have no control or authority over you. So how can they possess? Possession is not real. But you know what happens sometimes? Sometimes the whispers of shaitan is very loud in someone's head. Remember before I stated that they can cause mischief on earth, can't they? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قُلْ عَوْضُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ أَلَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the Guide of mankind, from the evil of retreating of the, re of the retreating whisperer, who whispers evil in the breasts of mankind. Sometimes the voice and whispers are that strong and loud that it actually brings you to insanity. And this is in the Quran clearly. And that explains the ordinary behavior of some when you watch some uh, clerics, religious clerics, doing ruqya on an individual who is supposedly possessed by a jinn. Which means those who are being beaten by shaitan into insanity. Notice, listen carefully, he said from the mas, Allah didn't say lamas, meaning touch, no, mas, insanity, internal. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nisa, verse number 76, In the the plot of shaitan is very weak. How much proof do we need from the Holy Quran to prove that position is not real? Some scholars even say that those who supposedly get possessed and their voices start to change, supposedly possess and, the, and their voices start to change, they actually get diagnosed with a medical term called misophonia, which is a reaction to sounds. They become irritated, enraged and panic when they hear sounds. I remember watching a film many years ago called The Exorcism of Emily Rose, a young girl who apparently was possessed when in reality she had epilepsy and schizophrenia. So all these fake videos you see on TikTok and YouTube and where supposed Mashayikh are reading Quran on a possessed individual, brothers and sisters, I promise you, whatever the Sheikh recites on this individual, whether it's Quran or whether it's a lyric from a song, the reaction of that individual will be the exact same reaction because they suffer from misophonia or a selective sound sensitivity syndrome which is a real diagnosis unless of course they are acting which is also very common to scare people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 3 verse 175 which means shaitan tries to frighten the believers and the righteous ones. But in chapter 41, verse 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُ تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Which means, those who say our Lord is Allah and then remained in the state of righteousness, then the angels will descend upon them. SubhanAllah. Do not fear and do not grieve. One of our greatest scholars by the name of Sheikh Sulaiman al-Ahmad, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his holy soul, says, this soul that is its guardian are the angels from above. So how does a jinn or evil terrify it or overcome you? No genie, no witch, no magic or jinn can cause harm to it. These claims are all superstitious. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to teach our kids, our youth, not to be scared of these videos. 
have full iman, have full faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all love, all merciful, all compassion. And do not listen to the strictness of some clerics because they don't want you to live one minute of happiness in this life. Not one minute of happiness in your life. One minute is the punishment of the grave. Then it's the scary judgment day, judgment day where everyone will be naked. How horrific. And if you don't pray a thousand times a day and watching Harry Potter is haram and entering the toilet with your right foot is haram. Brothers and sisters, the creator of the seven heavens and the earth is bigger than all of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants ease for us. What is the use of praying if my interaction with people is bad? What is the use of praying if my actions are not that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the use of praying if I lie, if I, if I backstab, if I steal? What is the point? Brothers and sisters, praying is for the righteous ones. Praying is for those who are, who are clean. Praying is for those who fear Allah Azza wa Jal. That's who the prayers are for. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from the whispers of shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise us with our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of Ahlul Iman and amongst the pious believers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow the intercession of Ahlul Bayt alayhum as salam in this world and the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us all in paradise insha'Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the oppression that the lovers of Ahlul Bayt alayhum as salam are facing today. Wherever they may be, and all innocent people, wherever they may be residing, we ask you, Ya Allah, to forgive all our sins, and we ask you for the love of every action that brings us closer to you, Ya Allah. We ask you, Ya Allah, not to let our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Ya Allah, there is none worthy of worship but you. Ya Allah, we ask you to shower us with your patience, uh, with patience and remain us on the straight path, and remove all evil surrounding us. Amin. Allahumma amin. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.